I read a lot of books and I recently realized that I actually never talk about them. So I decided to start sharing more of the research that I'm doing as I'm on my mission to understand how introverts can create healthy habits in a way that can help them contribute to other people while still feeling fulfilled themselves. So I thought for today it would be fun to share my thoughts about a book that I recently read. The book we're talking about today is Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson. If you've ever wondered why there are some people who just don't seem to understand you and some people you just can't seem to get through to, then spend the next 15 minutes with me for some insights and inspirations from this book. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what the book is about, things to keep in mind about the concepts of this book, why you shouldn't read this book, and how this book can help you in your daily life. Hi, I'm Mariela. Welcome to Productive Introvert Community. I support introverted solopreneurs in developing healthy habits so that they have the energy to work on their goals without daily routines that feel forced or that only last two weeks. I'm a book fan. My mailing list is called Productive Introvert Letters. So I've decided to call each podcast episode a chapter from now on, simply because it will amuse me really. And uh, what's life without joy, right? So in this chapter, we're talking about the book Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson. This book is about the four types of human behavior, also known as the DISA, DISA, or DISC profile. This book was recommended to me by my client, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. It was a very interesting read. I participated in a DISC workshop years ago, and I was familiar with the DISC profile, but I'd never read the book. Everyone I speak to about this book always laughs at the title because it's so recognizable. I'll read the full title and the first few lines off the back for you, just because I think it sets the stage very nicely. The book is titled, Surrounded by Idiots. The four types of human behavior, or how to understand those who cannot be understood. And the first few lines on the back, ever ended up in an argument because you were misinterpreted? Has a colleague's total inability to see your point left you baffled? Or are you just tired of not being listened to? I think everyone has been in at least one of these situations. I've been in all three of them. <laughs> Either in a work environment or in a personal situation. What's the book about? The book describes four types of behavior based on two axes. One axis is classified as introverted, passive, or reserved behavior on one end, and extroverted, active or implementer behavior on the other end. And the other axis is task-oriented or issue-oriented behavior on one end and relation-oriented behavior on the other end. So roughly, are you more introverted or extroverted? And do you think more about the task at hand or the people involved? From this, you get four quadrants and each quadrant has a letter or color code for one of the behavior profiles. I'm just going to hold up the book and show you the inside where it has those quadrants. I will walk you through it really briefly, but these are the four quadrants right here along those two axes. So each quadrant has a letter or color code for one of the behavior profiles. A is for analytical, D for dominant, S for stable, and I for inspiring. They're also known as four colors, blue, red, green, and yellow respectively. So each color has its particular behavior traits and way of communicating. The book is structured by chapter for each color, and it has several chapters about particular situations and, you know, misunderstandings, common misunderstandings. For example, how to deliver really bad news and um, stress factors and energy thieves, just to name two. And those are also organized per color or per profile. So you can easily jump to the profile you're most interested in. Let's touch on each of the profiles briefly. So blues are in the introverted and task oriented quadrant. Blues are known to be very analytical and they have a keen eye for detail, but they're also seen as slow to react and overly cautious. Reds are in the extroverted and task oriented quadrant. Reds are known as dominant. 
They're quick to react and are good at pushing towards action, but they're also seen as controlling and aggressive. Yellows are the extroverted and people-oriented quadrant. They're known as inspiring. They can inspire the masses and they like rapid action, but they're also seen as impulsive and that they have little follow through. Greens are in the introverted and people-oriented quadrant. Greens are known as stable, they're calm and supportive, but they're also seen as conflict avoiding and awkward. Usually people in the same quadrant, they understand each other perfectly. They speak the same language because they think about the same type of thing, you know, either task or people oriented, and they have a similar communication and decision style, introverted or extroverted. So blues with blues, reds with reds, yellows with yellows, greens with greens, generally speaking, can get along pretty well and work together pretty well. well Maybe that last one isn't true. <laughs> they can get along pretty well. Working together is a bit more complicated, has more layers to it. We're not gonna get into that right now. But uh, generally speaking, if you have the same disc profile as someone else, you can get along pretty nicely. People who are one on one axis, but in a different quadrant, can still get along pretty well when they can find overlap on the axis that they're on. For example, blues and greens both have an introverted decision-making and communication style. So they can see eye to eye on that. However, they can have misunderstandings and struggles when it comes to focusing either on the task or on the people involved, because that's different for those two styles. If they don't know that about each other and how to find the midway, that can lead to a lot of misunderstanding when you're trying to work together. When you're in opposite quadrants, that's when you can really get into trouble. For example, red and greens or blues and yellows. Their focus and communication style is so far apart that situations can arise when every person feels like the other person is being completely unreasonable. Things to keep in mind. Most people are a mix of the different colors of the disc profile. Very rarely are people purely red, purely blue, etc. As Erickson explains in the book, 80% of people have a combination of two colors that dominate their behavior. And here's an example. This is an analysis done by the Human Performance Technology in 2016 on Barack Obama's profile. I'll leave the reference in the description. Although in a poll, most people thought Obama was mostly yellow because he's charismatic and optimistic. In the article, however, they point out blue and red as Obama's most dominant styles. Before you ask, yes, you can have two opposite styles as your dominant style. That's great because you can speak most people's language. For Obama, his most dominant color is blue, so he is introverted and analytical. His second most dominant trait is red, that's extroverted and quick to react. So, of course, this analysis of Barack Obama was done based on public knowledge about him. So, presumably by watching his behaviors and interviews, this writer then made an educated guess about his disc profile. If you want to know about your disc profile, there are online tests that you can do. If you Google this test, you'll find a couple of different ones. Most of them are free and some don't require you to give your email address. Some are very in-depth and others offer a more quick overview. Some of them have questions based on how much you think you have a certain character trait and others will show you statements and ask if you agree or disagree with that statement about yourself. They all should give you roughly the same results so you can choose one with a style of questions that you like. Another important thing to keep in mind is that DISC talks about behavior. This is also emphasized by the writer who wrote the article around Obama's DISC profile. And those were slightly different. Both have blue and red as most dominant. His public profile also has yellow, but in different strengths. Since Obama is a public figure, he is perceived different as a politician than how he is probably in his personal life. And it's a bit more difficult to understand his natural style when we observe it from the outside. And this is very common, right? It's not uncommon for people to have a work personality and an in private personality. For example, if you have coworkers, they may label you as red, while your family and friends may experience you more as yellow or green. 
This is because we tend to behave slightly different in different situations or depending on the role that we have. So I think it's good to keep in mind that the DISC test talks about behavior. So the way that we act, it's not so much about your real personality, which I like to think of as the way you are when you feel safe and content. Finally, no test can give you the full picture of you. Although personality and behavior tests are useful to gain insight into a certain aspect of your personality, keep in mind that it does just that. Highlight one aspect of your personality. You are much more than that one aspect and don't fall into the trap of letting one trait fully define who you are. I know I talk a lot about being an introvert, but the same is true there. It's one aspect of many things that make up who you are. Why you shouldn't read this book. The DISC profile is simple and straightforward. It's great if you're interested in human behavior and it can be very useful if you're a coach like me, if you're managing a team or if you're hiring people. It can also be helpful if you're working in a team or if you work with clients that have different behavior profiles. Don't read this book if you think it's going to help you solve conflicts with difficult people. Yes, it does give great insights and it also has pages of um, advice and instructions even on how to communicate with people who have a different color than you. So in that respect, it can give you a piece of the puzzle to navigate tough situations and diffuse conflicts. But conflict resolution isn't really the topic of this book and it's a big topic that requires other communication skills on top of just knowing about people's behavior profiles. Also don't read this book if you're expecting a let's solve this together attitude or if you're easily insulted yourself. Erickson mentions at the beginning of the book that he talks about the four behavior types in extremes. So it is confrontational for everyone. <laughs> he clearly talks about all the faults of every profile and each of the four colors on its own seems really rigid and like difficult to work with. So take it with a grain of salt and remember that you are always a mix of different profiles and that no assessment captures all of you. How can this book help you on a daily basis? Overall, this book is helpful to understand other people, especially when you're dealing with constant misunderstanding or irritations because people seem insensitive to your needs or you're hearing that from others that you're insensitive to their needs. Understanding that it can be as simple as having a different style really gives some peace of mind. It's not that people don't care, it's just that they naturally focus on different things than you do. The book also gives practical advice about how to communicate with each style by focusing on what's important for the other person's style. This is very helpful. Although the book doesn't talk much about setting healthy boundaries for yourself. Yes, we want to accommodate others by connecting with their style, but if you're constantly doing this, it takes up a lot of energy and it can make you feel tired all the time and like you're always the one supporting others. So one way to use this in your daily life is to take the knowledge of how each style operates relative to your own and to set boundaries around what behavior is and is not acceptable to you. Having a clear idea of what behavior you do and do not accept from other people can help you to set healthy boundaries. For example, around the time and the energy that you spend on certain interactions and how to approach certain interactions in a way that you can still contribute, but it doesn't take up all your energy. Those were my thoughts today about Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson, this one. My question for you, which one of the four colors do you interact with mostly? Blues, reds, oh, it's a different order. <laughs> Blues, reds, yellows, or greens. I have an assessment of my own called my habit style. In my habit style, there are three styles. The builder's mortar, those of us who thrive on structure. The painter's palette, those of us who thrive on play. And the chef's cookbook, those of us who thrive by having oversight. If you want to know your habit style, book a free call with me with the link in the description. In 15 minutes, you'll know your style and the key element you need to develop healthy habits easily and to make them stick. To be able to give you one more piece of the puzzle to help you boost your energy and naturally excel in your life. 
Thank you for hanging out with me today and let's talk again next week. Thank you for listening to the Productive Introvert Community Podcast. If you're an introverted entrepreneur and you're ready to thrive in your own way, then connect with me on thefrankermessage.com slash contact.